Hi everyone, Ed Amoroso here from Tag Cyber, and I'm sitting with my friend Doug Johnson, who is the Senior Director of Solution Engineering at Blackridge Technology. Hi, Doug. How are you doing today? Awesome title. Did I get that right? <coughs> you did. So Sometimes it's hard. Those titles can get a little complex. Huh? Yeah. They get bigger, they get longer, and then <laughs> seldom do they describe what you actually do. So we should put like Chief Geek or something in there. I wish. I, that'd look better on my Facebook page. <laughs> now, now, you guys have a pretty interesting technology at Blackbirds. Give me a little tutorial on how the, how the technology works and how it accomplishes some security objectives. All right, so um, the core fundamental thing that we're doing is trying to bring identity to network security. Okay. So if you think about a network, it was really designed for connectivity to make sure that point A could talk to point B. Securing it was more or less an afterthought. So there's, since the internet was created, you've got a lot of security technologies that have come along. Um, you've also got a lot of attacks and hackers that have also come along. And a lot of the mechanisms that have been using for a long time they're no longer sufficient to keep up with the current state of you right. know, vulnerabilities, risks, assessments, stuff like that. Right. So our CEO and CTO came together with an idea around this technology that could bring identity to the network. Mm. So you think about uh, what a traditional firewall would do. It's designed to stop you, know, you based on where you're coming from and probably what you're trying to get to. It doesn't really care. Traditional five tuple. Yeah. Address port. Exactly. Yeah. Address port and protocol. Um, it doesn't really look at who you are. Kind of assumes that that's an afterthought. You know, the application will check your username and password and determine, hey, should you get access or not. What we're trying to do is bring that sense of identity to the network. So basically before those sessions are established, we're validating who you are and whether or not you have access. So if you think about it when you would, say, check your email. Uh, you establish a connection to, say, your Outlook server or your Gmail or what mm -hmm. have you. Once you've already established that connection, People already can start looking at what you're doing, that you exist, trying to you know, scope you out, figure out what they want to do to attack you. If that session can't ever be established, they have no chance to start figuring out what they're going to do. Um, so if you think about your standard attack kill chain, we're trying to get in front of everything so that we can protect you. What we call cloaking mm -hmm. is basically if the identity doesn't match, we'll just drop the traffic. You yeah. don't get a response, don't get an unauthorized user, bad password, what have you. Now, the real secret sauce for our technology is that we're doing this at, like, at the session establishment. It's in the TCP uh, header, mm -hmm. the very first TCP SYN packet in the uh, what's called the three-way handshake. Right. So by embedding the identity into that particular part of the uh, session establishment. Right into the header. Right into the header. So um, specifically, we're encoding a uh, cryptographically secure 32-bit integer that has everything that we need to determine who you are, where you're coming from, and then evaluate our security policy against that. Mm -hmm. What's really interesting is the way we're doing this doesn't actually require any special uh, changes to the TCP protocol. So if you have our technology on either ends of a communication uh, tunnel, anything in between it will mm -hmm. have no worries about you know, affecting how mm -hmm. they operate. So basically you can you know, have point A and point B and have the internet in between. And we're not going to require you to have special vendors, configurations, or anything else. It's RFC compliant. It should work with everything. Mm -hmm. And since we have identity exit at that session establishment, we can evaluate policy on that. We can do all the typical types of security uh, protocols, enforcements, you know, discards, forward, redirect, what have you, basically off of a small bit of information, which allows for us to be very, very fast, mm -hmm. also to be very, very effective, too. So if you think about things like overloading your traditional firewalls, we don't really have those same risks because computationally we're looking at a very specific part piece of information that happens to be more or less optimized for what we're trying to do. So that 36-bit uh, identifier to manage that, is, it, is that something like your gateway product would do the uh, administration and maintenance of that? Like how am I actually getting that identity out to an endpoint or to a, a participant in the TCP protocol? So basically, <coughs> um, there's two different models that you can uh, deploy us in. So if you put us in as a, ch as a sort of a choke point mm. where traffic will flow through us. Right. Um, Next uh, to a firewall or something. Right? Uh, it can be really independent. Yeah. So um, you can have a firewall, you cannot have a firewall. We're not, because we're uh, conforming with TCPs, RF the RFCs, the standards, the firewall where it is really doesn't have it any effect. It shouldn't matter, right? Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so what we'll do is we'll intercept the traffic. Mm -hmm. And then we'll basically determine if you should have access to send this traffic out. Mm -hmm. uh, if you do, what we'll do is we'll insert our identity token into the TCP header, specifically into the um, what's called the ISN, which is your TCP random right. uh, sequence number. So because that specific number means something, 
for the session establishment. Mm -hmm. So when you get your response back, that number should be incremented in a certain way. Most things that are in between point A and point B won't actually change it. So it, what we're doing is taking what is a random number for everybody else in the world and making it something that we are looking for specifically. Yeah. So you insert that, it goes off and goes wherever it needs to go. We assume that there's normal routing you know, between mm. data centers, countries, you know, your home laptop and Starbucks, whatever you're trying to get to. And then when you get to what we call our resolution gateway, it'll look and validate, okay, I know what I'm protecting. Is this identity legitimate? Does it have rights to go beyond me? And if so, where is it supposed to go? Yeah. So just because you have an identity doesn't necessarily mean you should have access to everything that our technology is protecting. So let me ask you, a lot of uh, businesses establish identity management sort of application level gateways for mm -hmm. third parties to log in to type a password in or whatever. They would typically, that TCP handshake coming through, say, an enterprise perimeter would be allowed right through, even if they ultimately are not allowed access, right? So the packets get through even though the user shouldn't be. Is that something you guys fix? Like if, if, if a session shouldn't be established, then you guys won't allow any packets through, right? Isn't that more or less the, uh, the, how the solution works kind of keeps a, uh, a real strict separation between someone who shouldn't be in your network and, 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 and your assets. Am I thinking yeah. about that right? Yeah. Um, so if you think about it, um, a good example would be, we'll take like an Amazon cloud, for yeah. example. Yeah. So if you start up an Amazon environment, you probably have about anywhere from 30 seconds to maybe two minutes before you're going to start getting port scanned. Right. Um, part of that is because Amazon publishes their addresses, <laughs> and part of it is because people are always looking for you know, new things to attack, just you know, whether they're malicious okay. or they're just playing around. Right. Um, if you are coming at our gateway and you don't have an identity, we flag that as unknown identity and we'll drop the traffic right off the bat. Mm -hmm. All right. um, first packet. Right? Yeah, first packet. So yeah. the sessions aren't ever established. Right. So what you'll think is that you're going along on the internet and you've just timed out. You know, nothing's yeah. there, nothing's yeah. plugged in, it just doesn't exist. Hence the cloaking term exactly. that you guys use a yeah. lot. It really yeah. does hide uh, an infrastructure from a scanner. Right, it can hide you know, either a network, a resource, what, you know, depending That's on what you're trying to protect. That's pretty powerful. It's actually very powerful, um, particularly when you think about it from a perspective of most attackers start with just trying to figure out what's out there. And if they can't mm -hmm. find what's out there, um, you know, 90% I'd say of the uh, attack community really is just trying to find out what's easy. So mm -hmm. they, you know, they're not really targeted, they're just looking for something that's simple, possibly not secured. Right. If they don't find it in 10 seconds, they're gonna move on to the next thing. It's an awesome use case. Yeah. So. Yeah. Yeah. Do, you, do you have a lot of customers who come just seeing the idea of maybe cloaking from scanning as a, as a means for um, sort of justifying putting the, the Blackbridge technology right into the enterprise? Is that, a, is that a, one of the stronger use cases? It, it maybe is. there's 10 others, I don't know. It, it actually that's is one of our... One, yeah, it is one of our, our more powerful use cases, but um, for two reasons. So if you have what we like to call, uh, our terminology is protected resource, but mm. if you think about it like you know the crown jewel, something you're really right. concerned about, um, you want to make sure that it's not compromised. You want to make sure that it's you know not hacked, not you know uh, brought down, whatever you want. Sure. The other thing is that when you think about it, if we can stop the scanning, if we can stop the reconnaissance, we're going to make whatever resources we're protecting have more computational ability to do what they're supposed to be doing. So if you think about a session establishment, um, you know, you basically make a connection, it opens up a port, yeah. probably you know, allocates some resources for it. If you are scanning a system, you're going through you know, 65,000 different ports, mm -hmm. opening all those up. Um, if you think about what a, a you know, SYN attack is, basically something will hit all those ports and just leave those connections open right. and not responding. If we can block that, we can let the computational uh, abilities of that resource do whatever it's supposed to be doing. We can basically save you money by letting you not have to worry about all this other stuff so you can focus on the things you're trying to do. Mm -hmm. So that kind of efficiency, we're getting a lot of traction on that from some of the bigger systems, mainframes, what have you, that are designed to be computationally intense and can't really afford to get you know, that kind of um, processing power taken away from them. You know, that's such a general capability that I would think its application spans almost anything you can think of from protecting an enterprise to specific things like uh, blockchain or something. I, I would imagine mm -hmm. you guys could pretty much embed that technology anywhere t the TCP protocol is being used. Yeah, and that's, I have that right? Yeah, and that's what we're actually targeting is yeah. basically, um, if, you, if you take a step back to our concept of identity, 
You know, for us, identity isn't a person necessarily. It's not a machine. It's anything that accesses a network. It's a smart bridge. It's a you know, air traffic controller. It's a person logging into a laptop. All of those things that access a network, you know, they're using TCP to connect from point A to point B. We want to be there to protect it. Right. Right, right. Well, you look like you're having fun at work. I'm having a lot of fun, but it's it's the environment's great. The technology is cutting edge. It's uh, we're always breaking new ground, and we're getting to play with a lot of stuff that you know a lot of people want to play with but don't really get to in their normal day jobs. We get to do that. That's awesome. Well, I hope you keep doing good work and keeping us all safe from hackers. That's our intent. So. <laughs> Thanks for stopping by. Thank Mike. you it was very great much. Great to chat with you. Enjoyed it, and, and we'll see you next time.